Hello and welcome to this new City Engine tutorial about urban mass creation. We are going to see how this master plan has been created using the new massing components shipped with City Engine 2024 that were specifically designed for Visual CGA. If you want to check out this cool example, you'll need to have City Engine 2024 installed along with the latest version of SRELIP and download the VCGA playground example. For the streets to display correctly, it's also important that you have the complete streets example also present in your workspace. Both can be downloaded directly from the help menu, download tutorials and examples. Well, let's go ahead and jump directly into it. These are the massing rules that you can now find in SRELIP. Applied to 100 by 100 meter parcels, we can get an idea of what kind of block typologies can be generated. As you see, they are organized in four groups. First, the urban block group contains perimeter configurations around the central courtyard that are frequently used for residential and mixed use areas. Then the slab block group could be more oriented to business centers or administrative areas. The point block group is intended for the creation of isolated buildings like towers or multifamily residential blocks. Finally, the suburban block group includes some of the typical low density developments like single family residential or row houses. They all work procedurally with a series of attributes that can be tweaked to achieve the desired configurations and density levels. Now, these are going to be the basic elements to create our buildings. They also can be combined with other components in Visual CGA, allowing us to create our massing designs. I've placed the block patterns to the side of my plan in a separate layer to have a kind of visual reference while working on the massing. A way to generate the urban mass very quickly would be using the perimeter random block. This rule randomly creates a group of buildings controlled by some parameters. Let's see how it's done. I can turn off the patterns for now and the first thing we have to do is create a new VCGA design to assemble our components. I will put my new design into Rules, VCGA Designs, Mass. Right click on the folder, New, Visual CGA Design. And I will call it Test Development. And when we click Finish, the VCGA canvas opens automatically. Let's expand it a little bit so we have a little bit more room. We right click on the empty space, Add Node, Library, Massing. From here, we can access all massing components from SRELIP. In this case, we'll use the perimeter random block and connect it to the initial shape. Now on the viewport, we can select all the shapes where we want to have buildings on. I have a selection set prepared for that, so we don't have to pick them all one by one. And just drag and drop on them to apply the design. If we want all the control parameters to show up at the inspector, we just click on the grey ball of the component and they will be displayed. Like that, we may now adjust the ranges as usual and update the seed to generate different urban landscapes. Of course, being the design completely procedural, we may adjust our streets or parcels at any time and the whole content will adapt. Now, there's a lot more we can do adding other components to our VCGA design. 
If you want to learn more about it, there is an excellent tutorial available where all the details are explained. I strongly recommend you to watch it. So the random rule might be useful in certain scenarios, but working on a real master plan would require more accurate designs. For that, we might use any of the other massing components that allow a higher level of control. Let's add, for example, a slab and tower typology to this block. Now we have precise control over the orientation, length, depth, etc. to configure our massing study. By adding the components report parcel area plugged into the initial shape and floor splitter to the building masses, our massing design will be able to report useful urban density data like GFA, FAR, or coverage. Let's apply the same design to other lots to generate some more mass. We can see all the data available at the report section. And if we bring up the dashboards, we see that the metrics show up also there. These urban metrics are essential during the design process to measure the impact of our urban intervention. So this way we can move forward shaping our master plan creating VCGA designs, combining different massing components on the same design, and apply them to one or multiple parcels. Then, playing with the attributes, always having the reported metrics under control, we keep improving our urban vision. And this is our final plan. As you see, Starting from the basic typologies, combining them and adding other components, we may create simple but effective massing models. The result is totally dynamic, so it can be modified at any stage while reporting the density metrics in real time. Well, that's all for now. In the next tutorial, we'll see how can we refine our models by adding facade details to our buildings and try different materials. I hope this little demo will help you get started creating cool urban designs. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for new exciting updates.